Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we bring back one of my favorite people in the whole wide world, Shirley Wu. Um, Hello. And I'm just going to ask everybody to bear with me for a second while I like edit this Zoom video because we're sharing Shirley's screen today, um, mm -hmm. which means that I am. Wait, I don't even know how to do this. I need to edit the crop somehow. And so uh, this this I may regret this. Maybe <laughs> maybe we just have a little bit of a black bar on top of of Shirley's screen today. <laughs> so I can't I can't see anything that's going on right now. So like <laughs> I have just, just no idea what you're doing. I'm just I'm I'm currently just pushing buttons. Um, for for so, all I know, you could just be like putting emojis on like my face or something. Oh, that for is all a, I know. that is a good idea. Like a holy bucket on my face. <laughs> so I, I know, found what you could be doing. I found a thing that uh, well I didn't find it. Joel Hooks uh, pointed me to it, and it is a um, it's like a AR uh, like projector, so that you can show um, like whatever you want on your. It, it was so freaking cool. I'm I'm so. Is it like light steps or something like that light form i think light form yeah i've heard of that it sounds really cool so i'm just distracted looking because i just realized it's really weird not to be able to see anything including the chat <laughs> and so i'm just going to twitch to like just at least be able to see the chat yes so um yeah we're right we're definitely doing this a little bit a little bit out of the norm today um <laughs> but i think it's i think it's going to be great so yeah, I woke up this morning and I was like, I thought, so I had like, uh, made, I had scheduled like a call with my friend that I had met at a conference at like 10 a.m. And then I woke up this morning and I was like, I feel like there was also something else that was supposed to happen today. <laughs> <laughs> was it like a very, it was, it was like a home alone scene. You were like sitting down, you're like, Kevin! <laughs> <laughs> I was brushing my teeth um and then i was like wait wasn't i supposed to do a stream with jason on the seventh and for i a split was second, supposed to learn something today <laughs> for a split second for some reason i thought it was the 11th and i was like holy shit did i miss the whole thing and just like leave jason in his own stream like just like <laughs> by himself <laughs> no you know what i would have done in that case is i would have done like a drawing of you and i would have put it in the the spot above my head here and then i would have just talked to it <laughs> like really sad like great. sad sad lonely conversation like <laughs> surely what do you think about this no, nothing oh this is oh, this is okay. oh yeah wait okay now i can see everything that's happening and i can see your face this is great except you are talking um in a delayed manner in my <laughs> ipad yep yep there's like a three or four second delay on twitch so it's gonna be nice and weird um <laughs> this, is, this is gonna trip me out so hard <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm getting confused already okay so um so anyways <laughs> to add to the confusion, um, so uh, actually, before we talk about what we're going to do, let's talk about uh, for anybody who hasn't seen you on the show before. Um, oh, yes. Do you want to tell? Actually, I just want to know, like, what are you up to these days? I uh, the last I heard, you were doing awesome stuff at NYU. Um, yes. And I, I believe that wrapped. Is that true? Yes. Um, okay. okay. So, um, yeah, the last time we talked was when I was in New York. Um, and then I was there for three months for um, a residency, an artist residency. Um, and they like let me audit two of their classes, which was so cool. And then I ended up collaborating with two of their students on a final project. Um, and it's a physical data installation of women in computing. Oh, nice. um, and uh, and then we got to like show it at their winter show. And there was like thousands of people that came to the show and hundreds of people that saw our installation. Um, and that's super cool. Cause then we got a lot of feedback about like how inspiring it was to read about all these women. Um, and so we are working on putting all of the footage together into this mm. like one video that kind of like introduces the project. Um, and I'm also creating a web version so that like, 
obviously like not everybody in the world lives in New York. So, <laughs> um, so like obviously you couldn't make it to that show. Um, then we have like a web, web version for you to explore um, the data and um, read about all of the women in computing that we kind of um, uh, did the installation around. Um, and so, yeah, that's supposed to launch next week, hopefully, fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I just realized I didn't introduce myself. Hi, I'm Shirley. <laughs> um, and I create data visualizations. Um, speaking of data visualization, there's a, a question in the chat. We have not finished the holy bucket, but yes. we will finish the holy bucket. We will. Um, so yes. we, we wanted to take a break here, uh, and I guess now is as good a time as any to introduce the stream because Shirley had a brilliant idea for a stream. Um, so, so take it away, Shirley. Yeah, so, sorry, now Twitch is telling me to log in so I could, like, look at this chat. This is why I'm, like, really... This is... Um, I'm very distracted. Oh, now it's telling me that I need to put in a six-digit code for security measure. Oh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I mean, well, so, if you want me to um, cover while you look up that code, I can I can introduce the project. Well, it says I haven't gotten it yet, so I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Um, so, um, <laughs> this is going great. We're um, off to a wonderful start. Okay. Very wonderful. I feel like this is basically how every one of these start for us, Jason. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, originally we had scheduled this like third um, stream to kind of wrap up everything we were doing with Holy Buckets, which I'm still very excited about. Um, and I know you still have not updated the data, which I'm still very offended about because now it's the third time and you still don't have me in your data set. Um, but <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and then um. But then instead, uh, one of the things I wanted to get done in this for first quarter of the year is a complete like um, overhaul of my uh, current portfolio website, um, which I, I really do like. But I think um, because I designed it in 2016, I think it's like very reflective of a different period of my life. And I want to redo everything about it. Mm -hmm. um, and to do that, I've been hearing a lot about this thing called net not netflix netlify um and i keep hearing about it and how great it is but then um every time i get here and i start looking and i look at the documentations and i just get overwhelmed with any new thing and i like learning from workshops and stuff and and i was like oh but what if i ask jason to help me do a workshop of one and so this is how this started um, <laughs> and so <laughs> And so I want to completely redo my portfolio website and I want to um, still have the portfolio component, but also uh, add in a blog section um, and um, maybe eventually set up a store, but that's like very far down the line. And for today, I was just hoping to get um, Jason's help setting up the blog portion with Netlify. Um, and all I want the blog to do is like serve up my posts and then maybe do a very simple keep track of like, if someone hit the like button or something and, mm -hmm. and, and, and that way, I think that will help me. Cause one of the greatest barriers I have as a front end person is that like things just move so fast and I don't know how to do like the back end portion. Mm -hmm. Um, and I do, there are projects where I kind of want to like have, um, visitors who like get to the website and, um, I want to collect like, their thoughts basically of like, oh, how did you feel about this data set or something? And I, I do want to collect that sort of information and have that be, um, and have that be part of the data visualization that I show. Um, and so this is my ulterior motive of like, hopefully you'll teach me everything and I can incorporate this into my future work. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so another thing that, that uh, we had talked about is like, so we're gonna use Netlify for deployment um, and mm -hmm. then to build it, you wanted to use Nuxt, right? Mm -hmm. And so the, what is uh, what is fun is so I know Netlify, um, and you know Vue, but neither of us knows Nuxt. So what we thought would be really fun on this stream is to effectively wade in together and just try to figure this stuff out. So, um, so uh, what's what I think would be fun to start. Um, so today. Shirley sharing her screen. So th this is an odd, odd thing for me where I'm like hands-free, 
right? I can just do, I'll just do like a moose for the whole stream. And, uh, <laughs> and Shirley's going to be the one actually writing the code. Um, yes. But so what I thought would be nice is we can kind of take this with baby steps. So the first thing that we can do is get a repo set up and get it auto deploying to Netlify. Um, Do I need a Netlify account? You will need a Netlify account, but we can kind of step okay. through all those pieces as we go. Okay. Um, okay. So the first thing is just to like set up a new folder where you want the site to live. Okay. What should I call it? I'll just call it my my domain name. That's how I tend to do it. Really? Okay. I'm here. Um, so then we can uh, get in it and like. If you wanna, if you wanna just have something to deploy, you can just create a like an index file that says "Hello World" or or whatever your preferred. Oh, um, so I was thinking of using Parcel, um, uh, because uh, eventually on my portfolio website, I want to use like three JS with Vue mm. and okay. three. So Parcel was um what and because I don't understand bundlers, Parcel was the one that uh, can bundle all of that and mm -hmm. work. So, yeah. Um, is that is that going to be okay? Uh, yeah. I mean, I also okay. don't know Parcel, so we're going to learn a lot today. Um, <laughs> it should work fine with Netlify, right? Like, I don't it, even I don't know how all of these fit together. It it should. Um, I think the bigger question is is whether or not Nuxt has a, a friendly, like a Parcel oh, friendly no. setup. Um, oh, so what is oh, what does yeah. Nuxt like get started look like? Oh, they want me to create Nuxt app. Hmm. Mm. Okay. Mm. So we can definitely do that. Um, I wonder if they have like a go from zero. Oh wait, does Nuxt have a static export? Because that would be a problem. Um. Hmm. So I read their documentation two years ago once. I'm I'm looking up now to see if they have a, a static option. Um, oh, it says starting from scratch. Yeah, that's what we really want. Static yeah. file serving. Static generated. Okay, so we need Aha, yes. So they, they totally do have a uh, like a generation command that we can do. Um, okay. Okay, so that's that's really good. So let's start. Yeah, let's let's start from scratch, um, and then what we can do is get like the hello world uh, okay. put together from scratch, and then we'll get that up on Netlify. And then what what'll be fun is like as we make different changes, you once you commit and push those changes, those will just go live in the background while we keep working, um, oh which God. is which is really fun. Um, Wait, uh, okay, I have so many questions. I will delay them. No, no, yeah, you, feel free. Where do you what what? How do we? Where do we go? What, what do you want to do? So uh, if this website is currently being served from my GitHub pages mm -hmm. um, and the domain uh, is managed through Google domains, mm -hmm. um, is there a process of having to transfer things around? So the what we can do is um, by default, Netlify will give you a like a development site and that can hmm, be something that you choose. Like you could, you know, you could make it like your site v2.netlify.com or you can let it auto generate and it'll give you you know some something ridiculous um and then, mm -hmm. and then when you decide to swap over we'll effectively just instead of pointing at the github uh dns mm -hmm. you'll point at netlify's dns and then it'll Got it'll it. just what as soon as it propagates it'll swap over okay cool um understood okay cool so I'm ready. All right, so if we look at, where was the starting from scratch one that you found? Um, wait, this is, yes, starting from scratch, we did make directory. So it tells us to do a package.json. So I'm just gonna open uh, lights. And then I'm just gonna copy this below. Oh, and I have to go get Nuxt. Yeah. Oh, so it looks like we just 
in the package JSON, we, now we can just run npm install Nuxt. Uh, or wait, hold on. Let me let me create this package okay. JSON. Um, and then I have to go npm install Nuxt. Mm -hmm. And then, and then once I have that, then I can npm run and run dev. You can, but it looks like it won't do anything yet. So we, it, I think we need to create a pages directory or like does Nuxt, I don't know what Nuxt does if there's nothing in it. I don't know, but it does say like, but, but once we have Nuxt install npm run dev, it says we'll oh. launch Nuxt.js. Let's try it. Let's see if they have like a, maybe they ship with a tutorial or something that shows you what to do. Yeah, I maybe. Because I think like Svelte does that, where when you first run it, like gives you a, a thing that's like, you have a Svelte site. You need to do stuff with it. Ooh, look Whoa. at that fancy pants Ooh, stuff. Look at, wow. Wow, right. this, is, this up, is pretty. Up my. Please consider donating. Always a, always a cool thing. Wow, yeah. they show the annual budget. That's dope. That's a, th I like that. That's wow. really cool. Wow. This is awesome. Who's it maintained by? That's a great question. I don't, let's find out. Um, We're like going down the rabbit hole. <laughs> no, I, I think this is good though. Like, um, oh yeah, they've got a list of maintainers up on the on the bottom of the site and like. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Contributors. I, okay. Notes notes for future maintainers. This is a great idea. Um, yeah. Okay. So. Wow. Lots of nuxters on here. Oh. Oh oh. People are being so helpful, and then I'm just not looking at the, the chat. But you're you're keeping track of the chat. I well, I actually wasn't. I was totally looking up something else. <laughs> Wait, this is um, like oh, it's hello near this. Oh yeah, people are getting all over like how to do parcel with view. Um, it Wait, looks this is amazing. It looks like Nuxt ships with its own bundler, and I, it's probably parcel or Webpack under the hood. Um, mm. I, let me, yeah, I need to pull this chat out so that I can actually see it. Cause I'm definitely like off in my own little world here looking at things. Um, okay. So let's look at the repo. So in the repo, we have the packages, oh. the CLI builder. Oh, uh, Ecomath says it's Webpack under the hood. Okay, excellent. Which Thanks, makes sense because I think create view app, is it? Or no, 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 no. Whatever the view bundler, the view CLI is, I think also Webpack. Mm. That makes sense. Okay, yeah. This is pretty. I'm enjoying this. Yeah, I mean, this is, I, I love this stuff. You just get to okay, mess around. Okay, so and we've play. installed it. Um, and now I'm going to npm run dev. Okay. Okay. Ooh, ooh. Whoa. Wow. Look at, look at there. Yeah, this is good looking. Wow. Okay. Off to a good start. Looking great. All right. So okay, now so... it says it's waiting for file changes. And. Okay. Come on. All right, so it does it does ship with a thing, um, and then does that so that thing. just links to the starting from scratch docs that you're looking at now. Okay, perfect. So we're yeah. we're in great shape here. Um, so then, wow, this is yeah. This it looks. So I think the next thing we needed was like down below. It wanted us to add a page. Yeah, pages directory. Okay, so I'll go create a pages directory. And then create the first page. Okay. So, oh, I'm Grant, getting I'm excited. I'm, I'm like Grant is like, how do I make these amazing percentage bars? I'm like, I know, I like, I want to go figure this out yeah, too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that um, was beautiful. And then, the, and now, now it's, it's, and, and then it's like the, running and waiting, which is really, really cool. Okay. So, and the Wait. other thing is like when you create this index.view, I think it's just going to fire up and run, 
right? I, I think so. I'm I'm very delighted right now. Yeah, it is. We're we're 100% off to a great start. Uh, <laughs> like shout out to the the, the Nux developers for making the happy path wonderful. Yeah. Um, wait. Okay. And so we've already launched the project. So theoretically speaking. Theoretically uh, speaking. That should have. Did it do? And maybe we need to stop and restart because we created files. Oh, because like when we create a new directory, like yeah. it sometimes doesn't know to listen to that. Yeah, maybe. Okay, let's do that again. There is no need to restart. Oh, it does. Okay. So oh. we have to launch the project after we create pages. And now we won't oh. have to now we won't have to reload. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so now we should be able to get to Aha! The world. Okay. So at this point we can actually deploy this thing. So what we want to do is we want to use okay. the, the static uh, generation, which um it looks like all we have to do is run Nuxt generate. Where um, is it? It's on the guide, like under the introduction section on the, the left. I think it's up at the top uh, of that sidebar. Introduction? Mm hmm. And then there's a subsection in that page at the very bottom called static generated. Oh. And so this is what we're going to do for Netlify. So in your package JSON, We'll want to add like a build command. Um, okay. Okay. I, so we can just test this here. So let's go into package okay. JSON and then Script. add a, a build called, or that the, it'll run Nuxt generate. Nuxt generate. And then let's just run that and see if it does what we want. Okay. I'm going to get out of the, and then I'm going to npm run build. And so that will just, theoretically generate like a directory folder in in here that's yeah. just the built version it, it says it's going to give us a dist folder that'll just have like okay. the static site oh you're right okay so now that in then that index html should i think give us yeah so that's everything right that's what we need so yeah. let's let's deploy this thing um, okay. so if you want to create a Git repo, we can, we can change that. Do you have hub installed? No, wait, okay. Wait, before we go on. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, uh, there were some, um, <laughs> I like, I like SF, uh, Nua says just you two wait next will blow you away. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. Um, uh, there was something in the comments I saw that I wanted to understand better. Okay. okay, so SPA, SSR, and static. So SPA is single page application, right? Yes. And then SSR, ser server side rendering? Mm -hmm. Okay, and static, um, and that just generates the disk directory that we just did. Right. Um, and so it says Nux can do all of that. Um, and the reason why we decided to go with static is because of how Netlify likes things or? Right. So the the benefits of each are like, so SPA is mm -hmm. the lowest barrier to entry. It's you're just writing JavaScript, uh, you mount into a div on a page and you know, it just works, right? But as mm -hmm. the site gets more complex, if you want progressive enhancement or if somebody's got JavaScript disabled, that's completely unusable, mm -hmm. right? I see. Um, so server-side rendering, you have to you you run a server that will execute the the code in the background and then serve markup. So that gives mm -hmm. you progressive enhancement. It gives you um, like a JavaScript fallback and all those things that I you see. want. But mm -hmm. it requires you to run a server. So mm -hmm. then you have to have you know you've got like a digital ocean box or something you know around five bucks a month that you're paying to host your mm -hmm. website. Um, okay. If you do full static generation then you are doing the server side rendering work up front where you mm -hmm. generate the markup and then like deliver that to the equivalent of an, of an FTP folder. You're just dragging it somewhere. Um, Got it. And so the, that approach is, is what a, is kind of commonly getting called the jam stack. Um, oh. And so, okay, okay, okay. 
the idea of behind the Jamstack or static site generation is that you're pre-rendering all the files and then serving the, the output as opposed to mm -hmm. doing the work every time the page gets requested. Um, I see. So the benefit of that is that assuming your framework supports it well, uh, which it looks like Nux does, then you get to do the work once at build time and then put it on a CDN um, or, you know, so like Netlify is, is basically an, it's a application. What, what do they call it? Application or asset? They call it an ADN um, because it's a slightly more full featured CDN. Uh, mm, the idea okay. being that we take your static files and we put them in data centers around the world so that uh -huh. it's really close to the people who need it. Um, and uh -huh. then the requests happen very fast. So ultimately you as a developer don't have to think very hard because it's like, oh, I wrote this thing. My command generates a static file and then all of the like deployment and horizontal scaling and, and all those really complex things about hosting websites at high traffic, yeah. that stuff just happens. Um, awesome. And then Netlify for sites that are like smaller is just free. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you're like working on your own, it's just like a free way to get something up on the internet. So that, I think that's why there's a lot of buzz about the Jamstack is that it's, it kind of lowers the barrier to entry and doesn't require us to set up or configure servers. It, it removes the cost for individuals and, and those sorts of things. Um, oh, that's awesome. And in, in my opinion, it just, it like vastly simplifies the process. Awesome. Okay, I love not having to think about this stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Like, I just, I never want to think about servers ever again. Um, no. <laughs> but, okay, so now, okay. Uh, so okay. it, so the way that Netlify runs, there there are a few ways that Netlify can run. Like, we could just straight up deploy this, this built folder, um, mm -hmm. and it would be a manual deploy. You would just, like, anytime you wanted to get it live, you have to run, you, you install the Netlify CLI, and you do like a Netlify deploy and, and it, you know, that's what it is. Um, okay. That's fine if you are super particular or you don't want to uh, use Git or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to automate it, you can mm -hmm. put this up on GitHub or Bitbucket or GitLab and then mm -hmm. create a Netlify account and connect it to that Git repo. And mm -hmm. anytime you push to master or whatever you set your default branch as, it will automatically rebuild and deploy. Um, I like this. Yeah. So basically, if we create a new Git repo for for this site, you'll be able to. I'm trying to figure to... out if I should like unshare right now as I go and create these accounts. Um, unshare so my screen. Do you have two monitors? No, I only have one. Okay. So there are a couple things that we can do. I can actually navigate away from like I can just go over here while you create accounts. And then you can okay. tell me when you're ready. Um, Ooh, okay, yeah. But so, Perfect. do you do you want to set up the Git repo and stuff first? Because you shouldn't need any credentials or anything like that while we while we do that part. Yeah, I just uh, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, well, it, so, and whenever whenever we get to a point that you don't want people to look, just let me know, and I'll I'll hide the screen. Okay. Um, I guess I'll just call it. I'm so boring. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like descriptive names. Like I, I'm I'm always like, oh, I should come up with something clever. And then I'm like, no, just call it the thing that it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always like a one word repo name. So I'm like, I don't want to have to type long things. <laughs> <laughs> What's your repo called? Uh, stuff. <laughs> Literally like all of my, well, the reason why I was like, should I uh, show my GitHub repos? Because I have a lot of private repos for my clients. But literally all of my like client repos are like just the client name. <laughs> <laughs> it's like absolutely nothing um, uh, <laughs> original about any of them. So should I push up this repo? Yes. Okay. Yes, I am doing the right thing. No, I am not doing the right thing. Um, so I think you need to wait. You did the. Oh, I think you have to commit I did something. The... Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can you tell I haven't coded in like months? Um, you'll want. Ooh, okay, let's add. see. Wait, wait, before you do that, we oh. want to ignore some stuff. So let's okay, let's create not, a, yes, a dot right. get ignore. And 
No, I think. Modules. Do we want to do anything? Dot nux probably ignore that. I think so. I'm I'm trying to look that up right now to make sure. Yeah, I'm I'm just gonna look at their default repo and see what the yeah what it looks like. Um. Okay, here is. Examples and hello world. Of course, they don't have a get, get ignore in here. Here's one. Okay. Um, so they are ignoring dist dot nux dot nux ignore and dot cache. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me. I'll just. I'm put, just like. All Let's not let let me not pretend that I'm actually good at get on the command line. <laughs> like, no, I'm just no use worries their at all. CLI. <laughs> so yeah, we just want to ignore that that dist folder. Okay. Oh, the dot dist folder also that makes sense. Um, not not then, dot dist, just like regular dist. Oh, thank you. Um, and then you say cache. Well, they have a cache folder? They ignored dot cache, but I don't see one, so I don't know if we need to worry about it. Uh, I guess I'll put it in there just in case. Yeah. And I think I think that's everything. I don't see anything else that we need. Yeah, it seems like it. Uh V3 Frankie, I'm sure that it does. We we are kind of doing things the hard way. We started with an empty folder and we're manually creating everything to to make sure that we get our heads around how everything works. So we're not using like Nux has a bunch of really good starter starting points, um, but we're skipping that so that we don't. It, it's harder to kind of look at boilerplate and understand what it does. So we're we're doing this the the slow way. I like I like, and Molman saying add hater, haters to the ignore file. <laughs> I also appreciate that. Yes. Oh, cool. So, um, right. in the in the chat, there was a um, a link to gitignore.io, which is a very cool. What? Yeah. There's like Get a gitignore.io, and it you can just type in Nux, and it'll build you a a gitignore for it. That's super cool. Okay, I'm uh... Well, I guess uh dependencies sure. I'll use you. Wait. I wonder if there is any difference to Nuxt and Nuxt.js. I don't it looked like there was a little bit and that one skips the node module, so I think the one that you got was better. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Is, oh, authentication failed. We're not logged into your account. It looks like stuff did. But I did, did. I Things did get pushed. Things did indeed get pushed. It got pushed here in my terminal, but not from here. Hmm. Interesting. Let me try doing this. Let me actually. Let me remove this. How do I remove this? I don't know. These ones. Uh, remove. OK. <laughs> um, and then let's say clone repository. Let me try that. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. I don't want to do that. OK. All right. So from now on, I will try and remember how to do git on terminal. OK. And I can, I can help. Thank you. Um, um, okay, so so now we are okay. ready to head over to the Netlify site. So if you want to hit that sign up button, yay! And then oh, I guess I'll just sign in with GitHub. GitHub. Make your life easy. Yeah, is there going to be any? Ooh, I appreciate your background. This little nice little animation ooh. you have in the background. I don't know that right? I've ever seen that. Who did that? I bet Sarah did that. 
I was going to say, I'll bet it was Sarah. <laughs> she like, did you see the thing she done on the homepage with the, um, it's like the, that overhead view of the, the woman on her laptop and it like does this cool what? animation. No, come on. Whoa. I know. Right. It's like, come on, Sarah. <laughs> now you're just showing off. <laughs> I know. Sarah, stop being awesome. Yeah, yeah. And so speaking of, of Sarah showing off, she's in Hawaii right now. Uh, I oh, think yeah, she's I she's actively speaking at JS Conf Hawaii like currently, um, and so she's like you know she's like oh I'm gonna be out of the office and we're like okay we'll leave you alone and then she's just posting pictures of her on boats and stuff it's like come on <laughs> <laughs> that is not chill Sarah that is not chill <laughs> um, yeah on. so it's not like you work hard. Like, it's not like you work so hard, you know, she works so hard. She works so hard. It's I not know. like you don't deserve to be in Hawaii. Okay. Yeah, how dare and you? <laughs> how dare you be relaxing on Enjoying a boat yourself. in Hawaii. Enjoying yourself. I know. Um, no, she works so hard. Um, I have so much respect for what she does. Um, okay, so uh, I think okay, so the, yeah, the welcome to Netlify. To, Yes, um, and then once I hit this, it shouldn't show anything. Uh, no, it's a, it's an OAuth workflow, so it'll just ask you like, "Hey, do you want to authorize?" Okay. And then it'll just bounce you back to Netlify. Yeah, just my done. email address. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we you. try not to. We we will ask you for more to get um, repo access. <laughs> you hackers, you you dirty hackers! Okay. Not um, hacker time here. Okay. Um, but so. Ooh. Pre automatic. Ooh, I appreciate that. Let's encrypt. Okay, I'm I'm reading all of your. Never have to leave terminal. If you want, okay. we do have a CLI so that you can do all this stuff without uh, having to log in. Um, no, I like the automatic thing. Yeah, it's kind of nice. So if you hit this new site from Git, then it's going to ask you for repo permissions. Okay. Hey, thank you for the the cheer, Pesci. Okay, so like access to determine what resources to access. Okay, authorize. Okay, so now, um, and you'll just check, like just choose the one group that you want to use. No, only select your repositories. <laughs> and then you can just, um, Install. Ooh, password. Okay, I I will navigate away. Escape, escape. Um, but okay. it just dots. Oh, but now they know the length of my password. Not anymore. They don't. I hid. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> only, uh, only my, uh, only my, only my secrets are exposed on this show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, All right. So I'll pick this. Yep. Master, and, then and I, I've your, been committing to master, yes. Yes, and then your build command is going to be uh, that npm run build. You hackers, you you oh. dirty hackers. And then this is that then, dist folder where it gets built ooh. to. Do I need to do the slash? Nope. Nope. Awesome. That's it? That's it. What a great marketing for, for your company. This is like super Holy easy. Buckets, I actually didn't realize that we were going to do full Netlify onboarding today. So like, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to pretend like this was completely planned and I'm just going to take this around to the company and be, well, after I edit this section out, I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> no, you should keep that in there. That's like the spirit of your, <laughs> of your show. Yeah, so so now um, if you click that that enqueued like production deploy there, um, mm, I just realized sorry. I'm like moving my mouse on top of your screen that is completely ineffective. Um, <laughs> Wait, sorry, where is it? Do you see? Uh, you can either up at the top there's deploys, or in the middle of the screen there's the production deploys, and it shows you a list. Ah, yes. So yes. if you if you click that, we can actually watch it happen. What? Cool. Oh, look at that. And so it'll show us what's going on and like all of the, you know, the Netlify build bot and all that. And so now it's live. So if you hit the preview button, it Can should take us. Can you talk about the fact that 
the uh my site uh generated name is silly arting heli yep zero seven eight a zero eight so now anybody can go see our <laughs> yeah so so now that site exists and um so we can go back in and look at a couple things if you go back to your your tab um so those up and down arrows in the right are, are pretty helpful because the logs are kind of long um oh, so that one will bounce you up oh. to the top okay. and then if we go to the deploy settings deploy settings then you can change a few things here if you needed to so like as this grows you mm -hmm. um you may want to change the visibility of your logs like right now if you send somebody a link to to one of your deploys they can look at the logs which is super helpful mm. if you're like, hey, Nuxt, I'm getting a bill there. This is what it is. Um, mm -hmm. And so you can make those private. Uh, and then in your, uh, you can set build hooks. So like if you want to have something else trigger a, a thing, um, these will let you. What? So that's like, it's basically a web hook. So if you have a CMS and you want your CMS to rebuild your site whenever you change, you can just, oh. you can just do this. Um, okay. And so that's like later on down the road when you've got uh, data sources feeding your Nuxt site, you could say like, hey, I want you to rebuild whenever my data updates and, and like regenerate this this visualization. I'm, I'm pretending that oh. I'm you and like what kind of awesome project you're going to build on your site. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. Um, if you need environment variables, you can set them here. And um, if you wanted to do other things, like if you wanted to, for example, use like Google Tag Manager or something like that, you could actually just drop it into the snippet injection, which is really nice. Um, so you don't have to actually put it into your site. You can just, we'll just add it after the build. Um, kind of nice, right? Oh, man. Yes. Um, and then the asset optimization, if you want, we'll do things like compress your, your JavaScript and your CSS. Most modern generators will do that for you. So you don't mm -hmm. really need to. Um, but that's an option if you want it. And then okay. uh, a few other things that you can do in here. The the big ones that we probably want to look at is uh, at the top left of that column, there's a general option. Top left, yes. And then if you want here, you can change your site name so that it's easier to remember. <laughs> um, but if you want to keep it like, you know, yeah, that's that totally works. So now if you save that, then it's immediately updated. So like I'm going to use it right now. There it goes. It works. So anybody who wants to can go in and, and see that now as you as you work on it. Um, yeah. So uh, and then later when it's time, you can hit that domain management option. And that's where we'll give you instructions on setting up your uh, your custom domain. Uh -huh. So when it's when it's time, you can do that. Awesome. But yeah. Um, so lots of fun stuff you can do here. Nice. I'm distracted. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally OK. So um, at this point, I think we are we're, we're in pretty good shape here, I think. Um, um, this is going so smoothly um, that it's really scary. <laughs> well, don't worry, because we're about to start figuring out how to do a blog in Nuxt. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Um, so, so maybe the, the first thing that we can do just to show how this works is uh, if we go into the index.view um, index on your, yes. yeah, and let's just make any change. Okay, so then if you save this and um, you can commit the change. <laughs> Angry git. Wait, is it git status? Well, git status will show you what changed. Yeah, um, that's what I wanted. Yeah. I've been writing for like the last seven months and I don't think I remember how to code anymore. So thank you for reintroducing me. <laughs> here, here I, I'm, I'm here to help. <laughs> uh, 
Excellent commit message. And then hey, if you push I that. I need to be descriptive. Okay. So now if you go back to the Netlify page and just click the overview. Oh, oops. Netlify page. The uh, overview? There's the top top things. Um, top ah, tab. thank you. Yeah. So now it's building a new one with your commit message. Cool. So here in, you know, a, a, a minute or so, the new version will be live. All right, if I eat, is the crunching really annoying? I can't, I can't hear the crunching. It's because I'm trying really hard not to crunch too hard. <laughs> I mean, honestly, you could just turn into a, uh, an ASMR stream. You can just get really close to the Ooh. mic. What's it? What's that? Uh, well, I have my AirPods in, so and that's pretty much as close as it gets. Um, wait, what's that thing? Um, mukbang. Oh yeah, where like do you, where you just eat a bunch of food. Yeah, and then people give you money gifts. <laughs> money <laughs> gifts. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. I mean, they're called gifts, but they're actually just money. I had um uh. Nick De Jesus on the show a little while back, and okay. um, he was what he said he was going to do was teach us how to use Stripe, and he eventually did do that. But for the first part of the stream, he just ate pizza in front of me, and I was like, "You're a monster!" <laughs> oh my god, that's horrible. At least what I'm eating doesn't look that great. <laughs> it's just oatmeal. Um, anyway, okay, so. I think almost almost done. It's like done, done, but is kind it of waiting done. What if you reload? Mm. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know why I keep refreshing this page with that. Um, hmm. um, oh, yeah, I think I bail, spoke too soon. Bailed yeah. out by V3 Frankie. We have uh, a question about my guitar, which I will I will show you. <laughs> Wait. Okay. Watch. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this on the ground now. Um. So this is a. Uh, it's a tailor, um, but what I really like about this guitar is that they put a like a bevel, so you can kind of see here on the the corner where your arm sits, so that you don't have the corner of a guitar digging into your arm when you play. Um, and like tailor guitars are, are are pretty fancy pants, but like this this particular guitar is uh, is one of their like cheaper models, but I I definitely love it. Um, I don't know what the hell's going on. Maybe we just cancel this deploy and try again. Yeah. Um, so it does say eleven messages pending. It just shut down logging. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means. So let's just let's just take advantage of that cancel button. Um, if you go back into okay. the deploy, you can just hit cancel. Okay. And then. Um, we can just retry. Okay. Uh, and you can actually do it right from the UI there. Uh, where the, or yeah, or just trigger deploy. Clear cache and deploy site? I don't think you'll need to, but yeah, I think okay. it, it looks like, it looks like the logging went weird and I'm not sure, hmm. not sure if that's something between, oh. I can't imagine that's not, cause that's probably just our build bot. So all we did home. was, change this one line. Yeah, I, I think that might have been a hiccup in our system, um, which we will escalate after this call. <laughs> Run build. Hmm. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, wait. Wait. No, it says shutting down logging, seven messages pending. So the first time we did this, we didn't, it, 
we set it up. What could have changed between the first time and the second time? The Nothing. only thing yeah. that changed was this, right? Yeah. Like that... we didn't change any of the settings in Netlify. Mm-hmm. Something about mm -hmm. this feels feels like weirdness. Wait. Oh wait, no, no, no. That's just because I'm uh let me I'm gonna yell at our I'm gonna yell at our internal team. I am enjoying this bar. Okay. Okay, so hey, it, my local oh, no, version that, that works. No, no, my local version is fine. As yeah, so and And then let me see. I wonder. No, 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 no. I did change. I did change my package JSON. No, no, no. I, I changed my get ignored. That's right. Yeah, but that really. Or wait, is this the one that? Wait, if we're building off of dist from Netlify. Right. But if we don't push dist up, uh, the Netlify. Yeah, that that really shouldn't affect it. Um, oh, because because it will do the build and then it will do the build and it will it will run npm build and then right. Still okay. Still just get that dist. Okay. Okay, I am I am forking this right now. And I'm going to run it on my own site to see if it does mm -hmm. what I expect it to. Because I can't tell if this is, I can't tell if this is like Nuxt being temperamental or Netlify being temperamental or some like perfect storm. So let me just npm run build and the disk is the published directory. I want to see if this causes the um, the same error message for me. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna um, try clearing cache this time around. Yeah, let's give it a shot. Maybe maybe our build bot got locked up or something. Yeah. That's um, a good point. For uh for things that you can do, you can there are all sorts of sound effects you can play on this show that <laughs> I have just linked to in the chat. So uh on the participate page it'll show you all the chat commands. Oh my god, do you want to listen? Do you want to hear this Spotify playlist that I've been really into recently? I, um, I, I, so I definitely do. And I, if you want to link to it, that would be great. But I, we can't play it on here because we'll get a DMCA oh. takedown from, uh, from YouTube. Oh, wait. Um, but then. Unless you have the rights to the music. What? Yes, I own all of them. <laughs> um, it's like a Korean cafe music Spotify playlist. Is it is it one how... of the ones that's like no um, no license kind of thing? Because like the lo-fi hip hop playlist on YouTube is a twenty four hour channel. That mm -hmm. like that one is is totally legal to oh, play. Oh, I love that one. Um, so there are definitely playlists that you can play. What are you but... doing, computer? Why? Why are you like this? Okay, so every time that. <laughs> Okay, so yours is still hanging and mine mine is hanging. <laughs> um for whatever it's worth, um every time uh the messages are going down in numbers. Started from eleven, then seven, then two. I don't know if that helps. Jason, I Evidently spoke too soon. When before, right before this, I was like, "Oh, it's going so smoothly." 
Well, that's the curse of the live demo, right? Is that it's never going to work <laughs> the way we want it to. Um, it was until just now. I'm just going to well, keep deploying. Okay, so I have I have a, a thing to try from mm -hmm. the um, from the support team. They said we should add a sleep because mm -hmm. I'm gonna okay I'm gonna send this link to the chat so that everyone mm -hmm. can see what's happening. Um, and I'm going to yeah it looks like. With a failed deploy, you will see a log line similar to this. Other times, your build logs may just be cut off right in the middle. Uh, what does that mean? OK. So the workaround that's posted is basically to run a sleep and then return false. So. Okay. Uh, so at the at the very bottom, yeah, there. So we can just change the command in um, in Netlify. So under the the uh, deploy settings, you can get to it either way. Yeah. Um, and then where yeah. Here? So yeah, edit that. And then let's just give this a shot and see what happens. Okay. So now I'm gonna go back, and it's. Building now. Hmm. Okay, that's so that's I think a previous deploy. Let's ah. go. Let's go back out. So I'm gonna cancel this again. Yeah. And then uh, the right there at that where that cancel button was, you can just hit retry. Actually. Oh oh oh. Just deploy set. And queued. What a fancy word. Yeah, Nikki, I agree that it's it's real weird. We're uh, we're internally the team is looking up what's going on um, to see what is happening. Um, but yeah, what what it looks like is going on is like something is stuck and we don't know why. Mm -hmm. um, that does not seem like a next thing. Mm, no, still four messages pending. So someone earlier was saying, Joni is saying, when using, for instance, Storybook, the exporting static app option will generate a big log, and that will fight tends to complain. Hmm. Should we, while we're waiting on this, um, try a few more? Oh yeah, should I revert back to the Hello World and try? Uh, yeah, I mean we can we can definitely try that. See if a new a new commit causes it to work. Um, so I'm gonna revert to this. Or do, wouldn't nope. we want the next one because that that was when you changed the? All right, yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. So this one was the very first one. Okay. And then I guess we built on the update gate ignore. That's did we I, build on this one? I'm pretty sure. Okay. So yeah, because I I committed that one minute within each other. So, um, is this the copy button? I think that's a, like a permalink thing, or oh. is it? I don't know actually. Oh no, that's the okay. permalink thing. Okay, so then I'm just trying to figure out what this is. What happens when you click Anyways. it? Anyways, uh, not nothing. So I'm I'm guessing that that was actually the the copy, but that's okay. So get revert to this. Sure. And then I'll push that up. Hmm. 
Okay. Okay, so I've pushed that up. Yeah. So I and I'm just reading through um the logs to just check to see this one's new. It says waiting for other deploys from your team to complete. Uh, should I cancel the previous one? Yeah, let's do that. Um, the other thing they're telling me we can try is to is to set these values in a, a Netlify config. Um, um, so that's. Me. Oh, okay. Um, sorry, what values? So let's let's see what happens with this one, because if this one locks up on us, or if this one doesn't lock up on us, it might have just been the perfect storm of that commit going weird. Um, but if it doesn't, then... Okay, so here it goes. It's doing the thing. What does your mug say? Nope. There's a question in the chat. Mm. Wait for it. Awesome. Uh, okay, so that's that's not working. So we're going to try um, a Netlify config file. So we can just, um, in your repo. Okay, in my repo. We're going to add, um, we, we're going to create a new file. So probably do this in the your editor. Mm -hmm. um, at the root next to package JSON, we're going to create a file called netlify.yml. YML? Yeah. YAML, YAML, YAML. YAML. Um, so inside of this, we are going to add, where's it at? Should I pull up a certain link? Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to grab that link for you right now. Here. Um oh, but this is using Tommel. Tommel is Tommel is no fun at all. Um, what? Okay. So uh so what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna add a add a key called build, just the word build with a colon. And then under it, um indent and add a command colon and then we're going to add npm run build and then is this below the right it. amount of spacing mm -hmm. yeah yaml is weird it's like white space dependent until it's not and so the next one okay. we're going to add is publish with a colon and dist so okay. save this mm -hmm. commit it and let's see if this this fixes it for us. Okay. So it's been pushed up and Go okay. back and look at the deploy. Yes, so you'll have to cancel this one because it's locked up. Okay. It, it looks like we just discovered a bug in our platform. <laughs> so here we are. Uh, you know, you know, you know, you know how like Google pays for like when people do like find um, security bugs. Mm -hmm. Do I? Do I get? Do I get some payment? <laughs> Absolutely. I will. I will really? send you such a good Netlify swag kit. <laughs> Can you just get Net, like Netlify credit or something? Probably. Um, <laughs> ooh, you know what I'm you know what I'm getting made that you can store up your credit for? I'm what? I'm in the process of getting pajama pants made for, <gasps> for 
for an LFI. Awesome. I love pajama pants. In fact, right now I'm only wearing a um, presentable top and I'm wearing pajama bottoms. It's bright red. I love it. That's, I mean, that's most days for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's still shutting down or it's, it's still 13. And now it's 13 messages per day. Yeah. Something is definitely weird. Um, yeah. So should we, um, cause I think we have a little bit less than 20 minutes left. Should we just try and get the next part going? Um, and we'll just assume that this will get sorted out. Yeah, I think that might not be a bad idea. Okay. Um, I am. I sent them this build ID that I hope I just transcribed properly from your screen. And um, they're going to look into what the hell just go, what is going wrong because okay. it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> so yeah, th this is, this is like the perfect storm of like demo gods, but that's okay. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, let's, yeah. um, Let's go in and let's figure out some Nuxt stuff. Yes, let's do that. Okay, I'm going to run dev again. And then... Okay, okay so in Sorry. the Nuxt um, site. Okay, so yeah. now let's... I'm going to also go back to reading about Nuxt. Okay. Okay, so installation. We finish that. Directory structure, ooh, assets directory, components directory, layouts. Okay, so it looks to me mm -hmm. like what we can do here, it, it looks like the way that you do this is you just, like your blog will be in the pages. Pages, yeah. Um, looking to see if they have anything about Configuration, routing. That all seems yeah. right. The, let's see. Build. Ooh, dynamic dev, routes. Go. Ooh, routing. Basic routes. Okay. Oh, no, that let's doesn't see. Nested routes, dynamic nested routes, named views, transitions, middlewares. Um, so so what I'm trying, mm -hmm. I, I don't see anything in here about like specifically doing posts. So I think it's just um, writing in in files, right? Yeah. I wonder if there's like a Wait. blog. Um, yeah, so I guess like for example, like where I'm looking at the basic routes right now, I guess there's like an index up view and then they have a user slash. And I guess that's like a we, we can replace that with blog. Wait, let me look up the dynamic routes. Oh. It looks like there's something called Nuxt Press. Wait, what? Next, Nuxt what? So under the Nuxt project, they have a repo called Press. So like github.com slash Nuxt slash Press. Nuxt slash what? Press, P-R-E-S-S. -S. And this looks to be their like the markdown blogging solution. Oh. Um, so that might be the way we want to go. Deploy static. Go in dogs. Does it have, does it have like an example of what it looks like? But I feel like we don't even really need to get this whole thing. Yeah, I'm so this is where I think my my lack of familiarity with like everything. How well <laughs> so we should we should probably start by asking some baseline questions. How do you mm -hmm. want to write your blog? I uh, marked down. Okay. So it looks like there is a package 
called Nuxt Markdown. Mm. And that is um, in the same GitHub repo as Nuxt slash Markdown instead of Nuxt slash Press. Yes. Um, and so this, yeah, this I think looks we like want it just this. puts you in a position to be able to write a Markdown file. Yes. So I think what I was envisioning is um, that when it's the um, blog part that I would write like a markdown file and then I would have some sort of script to read that in mm -hmm. to my view file. Um, but then I guess that doesn't really take advantage of Nuxt. Yeah, this is pretty. That that Nuxt markdown is pretty low level. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Nikki, we have no idea if Nuxt Press is View Press. I don't think they're the same thing. A micro framework that leverages the Nuxt module system, so it lets you create pages slash whatever dot md to get URLs, which seems right. You deploy static with Nux Generate. That makes sense. Built in docs. Sorry, blog. where are you watching? Or I, I'm just reading the Nux Press like README. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. To try to yeah. understand what they're what they're offering here. Okay. Um so it yeah, deploy it deploys static, has built in docs, blog, and slides base apps, mm -hmm. uses markdown processing, good. And then apparently we can eject. I don't really mm. know what. Well, I don't want to. Seems like a lot of time to install an API. Yeah, like I don't. I don't want this. Like I think I just want the minimal amount possible. Okay. Um, and so I think it'd be good to try and figure out this markdown one and see how it can be shimmied in. So I guess that means like, for example, if we go to examples in press, then, and look at their pages and see their blog. Oh, and it's just about .md. Okay. Right, so, so, so this, is, this is what they're telling us that, that we would, like that's the the end result, but then you have to yeah. use the Nux Press. Like it, it sounds like they're kind of putting some opinions in here on exactly how this works. Um, so I'm not a hundred percent because that's a lot. Like there's a lot of a lot of uh, like the dot press dot css and the dot press dot json. That seems yeah, like a I lot of config. I don't. I don't want. I don't. I don't want. I don't want all of that. <laughs> Um, so Nikki just linked to a, an article mm. that was how to include Markdown content in view or not. Oh, and then there's another Jim Hall says create a front matter Markdown powered blog with Next.js. So dot com. Oh, yeah, the, this one looks right. Like the... Um, just enable Markdown and create your first blog post with Nux. That's hey, which one? E the the EcoMath? The the regenrec.com. A oh, regenrec with uh, create markdown powered blog Nux JS. Okay. That one. Ooh. Yeah. So this this looks like what we need because it, it just kind of is pretty bare bones here. So we've okay. created that. So it looks like it wants us to install the front matter markdown loader. Okay, I'm gonna go take a look at what that is. You're so much more thorough works. than I am. I'm like blindly installing things like, no, that <laughs> didn't do it. Never uninstall that. <laughs> <laughs> I um, 
There are sometimes, I think it really depends on my mood. I think sometimes when I'm like completely exasperated, I'm like, fuck all of this. I'm just gonna <laughs> copy. Like when I'm like deep in a bug and I'm like, I don't even care if like, well, I care if there's security vulnerabilities, but like, I barely care about what I'm copying. But like, I guess because this is like starting a, like a blog, I'm like, I want to make sure that whatever I'm using makes sense. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. Okay. Huh. All right. So we're, we are going to have to mess with like Nuxt internals to make this work, which is, which is okay. That sounds fun. Um, oh my God. Is this going to be another series? Cause we only have 10 <laughs> minutes left. We just keep starting the series. That's, that's going to be our curse is like everything that we do is always like, oh, we'll see you next time. <laughs> we're just like, let's see how far we get with, okay. Um, I can't quite tell what, so I, I like found webpack loader for front matter. Yeah. So and here's front matter. Okay. Sorry. What you were saying. So what I'm, what I'm understanding this to be is that this is going to take a markdown file and convert it into a JavaScript object with HTML so that we can actually put something out on the page. Um, okay. and then that front matter is going to get put into an attributes property so that if you want to include the title, category, uh, images, whatever in the that front matter block. Um, that way, you can you'll have like you can put it all in the same file instead of having to do some kind of magic to put your search engine stuff or or like mm -hmm. the date and things that aren't necessarily part of the actual article body. Um, mm -hmm. That that'll just go up in the front matter. So, um, okay. So I'm not sure. I think I'm missing a part, which is like. Let's say then for this one, I, I, okay, so I think I'm not fully comprehending what you just said. Um, so for this, um, I'm writing a markdown file and then creating a corresponding view file. Is that what's happening? No, right? So if I'm understanding what this blog post is recommending, we mm -hmm. are, we're telling Nuxt to use the front matter markdown loader for any markdown files. Mm -hmm. And then it is okay. going to, um, from there, See. we set up the, the post URL structure. Uh -huh. And, and we feed this like each markdown file into that dynamic slug because imports resolve well wait hold on so post and post and post is imports and imports is resolve oh 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 so it's content so so what's getting so imported the... is content okay sorry what yeah th this kind of goes backwards so if you go down to the sixth point it shows how we're actually doing this so we are uh, grabbing all of the okay the dynamic posts out of a like a post folder and then um putting them into content with the the path base name yeah so it, it. it looks like effectively what we're doing is taking markdown files, grabbing them, turning them into JavaScript objects, and then feeding them to this template. The template uses the, the file name, I believe, to, um, to create a permalink for the post, and then mm -hmm. does the, the dynamic slug thing with that underscore slug dot view. Yeah. And that's how we get posts. So it's, it's just kind of like looping and creating a new version of that template for each post that you write. Got it. And this is, this is the post. This is, so basically this is the file where, so the markdown probably goes in here. Wait, yeah. So the template 
in the yeah in slug view we are grabbing out the um the post imports our markdown file and because we've got the webpack loader set up that turns it into a, a javascript object mm -hmm. um and then we stick the val like the the component the actual markdown of mm -hmm. of the post ah. into single post component which got is it, then bound it. to that that component up at the top Okay, so I think where it was kind of confusing for me is the fact that they hard code in the title, but I'm guessing that they mean that we should actually be using. I think that was a typo, actually, yeah. Yeah, okay, so, because like this made it sound, seem like I had to create a new view file for a new, every new markdown file, which makes absolutely no sense. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I guess this is where this title would go. And so this is the component so we would need one of these components and then it should be able to work for each markdown file. Um, yeah. Or one, one of these view component or this one of these and then many of the markdowns. Um, mm -hmm. And then this is, and this is for um, looping through all of those pages mm -hmm. and then and then it assumes that we'll put the markdown files in the same post directory. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Wait. Um. What was the other one, including markdown content? And oh, because because um, that that other link is um in a view or single page application. So that wouldn't be for a blog, right? The one that EcoMath suggested. Yeah, I, it it looks like this is pretty similar, but statically serve, generate a manifest. Yeah, this one looks a little more intense, um, <laughs> and I don't know that it. I don't know that it's static compatible because it's not specifically called out that way. Where this one. Definitely is. is so I, I think this supposed is supposed to be. Yeah, I think this is the way. Oh, that... I like I like this explanation. Sorry. Yeah, um, I, I kind of want this article to be written in reverse, right? Like all the stuff that I wanted was below the next section. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like getting really confused. I was like, wait, where do they like reference the content? Oh, it does make directory content. OK. Wait. Oh, so wait, no, 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 no. Okay, hold on, hold on. I think I'm so, it's starting to come together, I think. Okay, hold on. Um, so, no, we're supposed to put our markdown files in the content file folder. I totally missed this step. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was, and I think I was like, like yelling at you to scroll down the page. So, <laughs> so go down, go down, go down. <laughs> wait, okay, 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 sorry. Um, Okay, so, okay, now things make so much sense. Um, okay, so we have a post directory that has all of our view code to turn the markdown file into um, the JavaScript and, and to plug it into the, to, to, to the JavaScript slash view template system that we mm -hmm. need. Um, and then we put all of our, um, and we put all of our, my markdown blog posts under content. Um, and I guess, ooh, okay. So this one was just saying that it will generate, it will take everything from content and generate and put it into slash posts.md. Oh, 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 okay. I, I don't understand. know why it would want to do that. Maybe it's saying that like in our dev process, like we would want to put it into content just to like have like a separation of cleanliness. And then maybe when we deploy that, it will just automatically then, oh. I think you and I just had the same realization. So what we, what we are doing is uh -huh. we're taking, like we're passing that as a, as a config object to get dynamic paths. So mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. passes in an object and the object is, okay. 
So there's the URL file path table. So you get the keys, which is the the. Wait, sorry, where are you seeing this? So if you, yeah, go go back down. Down, okay. Um, so in get dynamic paths, mm -hmm. we pass in this URL file path table, and okay. that is the argument that we're passing down below. In um, in the the call to get dynamic posts mm -hmm. uh, in the mm -hmm. generate call or that generate block. Oh, wait, generate. So further down. Ah. ah so okay. we, yeah, so we're passing in that object with the posts and the posts star md. Oh my god. Okay. And so right. that gets the keys out of the URL file path table, which would be slash posts and then sends that in, and then it looks up the file path glob, which is post slash star dot md, and then for every file that gets returned in the current working directory content, of content which is where you've actually written your, your stuff. Yes. Then, then do post slash. Yep. So the it, name of the file dot md. Okay. So that is it's it's some complicated URL generation logic, which I would you could do that a bunch of ways, right? You could um you could get it that way, you could get it by parsing the markdown or or however. Um this seems like an easy way to do it where it's just gonna whatever your file name is, that's gonna be the mm -hmm. blog slug, which seems like a reasonable thing to do. So it's easy to track one to one between your your site and your your code. Um, yeah. But yeah, that that seems reasonable to me. That seems like a like a way Do to solve that problem. That, that's because there's specific um because I because it's like Nux does seem to reserve some names for directories to do mm -hmm. certain things. I wonder mm -hmm. if it is no. Okay, so it just it just it seems really like they're just trying to keep the view code in their like in their dev environment, they're just trying to keep the view code aside from their like markdown code, like markdown files. Yeah, I think you're I think you're right that that's the the approach that's being taken here. Um, okay, I that's fair. I there's probably like a a very philosophical discussion to be had about like what the the best way to solve that problem is. Mm -hmm. Um, because like I, that's one of the reasons that I'm really into to MDX, which I think you can use MDX. MDX? Yeah. MDX? So, yeah. Um, and so what MDX does is it, it basically um, replaces the need for a JavaScript file where you can just kind of like mm. use a .mdx file in place of your, your .js file. Um, and so you just write markdown until you need something else and then you import the thing that you need. Which is really like I like that right that authoring model because then the content is where I expect it to be in the file structure. But uh, you know I that being said like this is a super to the best of my knowledge this is a very React centric approach. Mm -hmm. I I think MDX has yeah. Ports, oh it does say but, view. It does seem to say it's yeah down for ambitious projects. All right. <laughs> So, oh, but it's alpha. Yeah, that might be that might not be the game you want to play with your personal website. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was gonna be like, maybe we can like Frankenstein all of this mm. and like, like take pieces from here and take pieces from like whatever markdown generator we yeah. like. Um. Okay, so I'm glad that we were able to figure out. So I feel like I feel really bad because I think they this person like probably goes into a lot of really good detail about like why they did it this way, and we're mm -hmm. just like yeah scanning around, being like why. Although I I will why? say that this is like the most true to life reading of an article 
I, that yeah. is exactly how I read articles. I scan, I look at code, I'm like, I don't know what this is. And then I go look at another article. <laughs> like I never read the descriptions. It's like recipe um, blogs where you uh, where you go to the recipe. Oh, I scroll down to Yeah, it's ingredients. immediately like, go to the recipe. I don't. I have zero interest in why you wrote this recipe. I, I always <laughs> wonder why they give so much background about like their grandma and like how they pass down the recipe to them. I guess it's nice, but I'm like, I just want to eat. So, yeah, who knows? Uh, who knows? Um, um, wait, but I, I do. I have, sorry, what? I have, uh, I have news. We the oh. the support team fixed the bug, so it should work now. If we if we kick the build, it um uh, it should it should actually build. Wait, but then um it's gonna just say hello world, so I need to go back and re add in this change. Or it... did it we ever finish change. reverting? I don't know that we ever actually got this this far. I think we added the, um, yeah. I think we just added. Wait, did I not revert? I don't think we ever got there. I think I totally I like nerd sniped you worked. before you got to it. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty I sure. I reverted. No, I think I reverted because am I? I'm like now. I'm like no, you did not nerd swipe me. <laughs> <laughs> I swear there's like a commit message that says revert. Oh. Oh, you know what? I was stupid. Oh, um, we reverted a different I, thing. I reverted a different thing. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> um, I mean, it works. Um, okay. So deploy. Deploys. Um, and then if we just. Now. Trigger deploy on the right there. Okay. Did they figure out what the problem was? No, this will work. This will we, work. Yes. We made a change to our build bot that mm -hmm. uh, was a bad change. <laughs> and so they just rolled that back. Okay. <laughs> but it did work the first time around. Yeah, I think that we may have been like the very first people to hit this. I think the change rolled out as we were. <laughs> but like props Yay. to the team for for super rapid response because I think that was all yeah. of, you know, like yeah, there it is. So now it's now it's done. That's awesome. Um, so Thank you for, for fixing to the buckets. to the Netlify team. Yeah. All so right. <laughs> I think you should ship this. I think this is a great personal website. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just like, um, that's weird. I'm just gonna buckets, dude, like uh, tweet like, what, what's that like retweet with comment or whatever? Yeah. And then I'm just gonna link to <laughs> yes. link to this website as the result of you and then I'll say this is a this is what happens when Jason teaches me in Netlify. <laughs> <laughs> I think I fully support it. I think that's wonderful. And then will that will that be a good thing or a or <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Either <laughs> It just you just you just starve me. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh wait, but I sorry, I I wanted to read this part about like isn't view press made for this kind of scenario? Yes. Some fancy features, so kind of the same what we're doing here. Yes. Next, and sometimes I want to combine application logic with markdown content. If you really just need full blog functionality, um. And nothing more. You should look into the static site generator too. So actually, you know what? This also gives me questions, which is like, I think, I think what I could do with this. Well, I guess it's not a question; it's a thought. Um, which is that this means that if I want to like put in. I don't know, like I want to put in a visualization and I don't want to use like an iframe, like, like if I ever, I don't know why I would do this, but like if I want to create like a 
like scroll driven visualization within my blog, which is too extra. But um, then theoretically, I think I could also, could I, could I change this code so that it supports more complex things in a blog post? Do you, does that, that those, that those sentences make sense? <laughs> they they did, and like, I, and I'm I'm totally on board because like I uh, in a previous iteration of my site, um, where I was more focused on like the travel stuff, I had built this like mm. React calculator for how much it would cost you to live abroad. Um, Ooh, I, I took okay. it down because all the information was out of date. But the uh, the the way that I ended up doing that was similar to what you're talking about. Like I had I. So, so the way that I would probably tackle that is in this case, what's happening is you've got the generic with the, the pages post underscore slug dot view. Mm -hmm. You could 100% create pages posts, custom post dot view. Mm -hmm. And it would be a blog post for all like URL intents and purposes, but mm -hmm. you could just put whatever you wanted in there. Um, so this would give you the like an escape hatch to just do really, really cool custom apps as blog posts. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how it works with combining like markdown here and then app and then more markdown below it. That's kind of where the, yeah. the MDX use case comes in. Um, yeah, that's I think that's why like when you shared the MDX one, um, that's why I thought of it because I've always wanted to have, so this is a pretty common problem I run into when I work with um, clients um, in that like, uh, if we want to do like a um, something called scrolly telling, which is like kind of a lot of the kinds of things that you might see on New York Times. And it's like you scroll and there's visualizations and mm -hmm. as you scroll, like text comes by and then like um, the scroll triggers different things to animate in the visualization. Right. Um, and so when I work with clients to do that, um, like I've been trying to find a way where um, they can have access to the text so that they can just edit that directly instead of me having, like the very first time I ever did a project like that with a mm -hmm. client, what ended up happening was that they would edit the words in a Google Doc. And yeah. then I would have to then copy that over and translate that into Oof. my like own, um, like in into my code. And mm -hmm. and then I was like, this is not the right way to do things. And so the second time around, I had them, um, uh, edit a GitHub file directly that I pulled from to like then populate the paragraphs and then in certain places i just have like a little div that like for any places that did need um the visualization then i had like a div that was like visual one visual two or something and i would then insert my visualizations into that mm -hmm. um but then like I've, I've been wanting to figure out how to have like yeah like markdown so that they because then like when i had them do the github file i still had to have them like know some html yeah. Um, then, like, if you just do like a markdown, I think that's like easier to pick up and faster to write. Um, also faster for me. So I like I've been trying to figure out a way to just like have both the markdown and like visualizations live on the same page, and for that page to like also be automatically generated into like a collection of blog post pages. Right. Yeah. That's, so. So that is a perfect use case for MDX. Um, I don't think MDX yeah. is the only solution for that. Mm -hmm. uh, like I know, so like WordPress does that with short codes and, um, and other, like other platforms have offered similar things. So mm -hmm. I think the, the biggest question would be like, um, if anybody's done like a short code thing for Nux. For Nux. Is it called short code? Well, I don't know. That's like that's what WordPress called it and that was where I first learned it. So that's what it is in my head, but I don't know if that's the right thing. 
Um, oh, speaking of speaking of MDX, um, Chris Biscardi, who is one of the creators of MDX, Ooh. is uh, in the chat right now talking about adding view support soon. So, <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, would it would it work for? Is it just view or like would it work? So like, what I'm still not clear about is like a view and Nux and how they go together. So then if it's like view support, would we be able to use it in Nux? Yes, because it looks like the the Nux loader. Okay, thank you, Ecomath. As far as I can tell, the Nux stuff is just consuming view components. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, looking at like, where did I, where was I looking? Um, as far as the routing goes, like that all seems like it should totally, you know, like just work. Um, and then I believe I even saw something in here about using like JSX in view if you want it. So I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of potential to like get exactly what you want. I think that you might mm -hmm. be a little bit on the bleeding edge here. Um, I'm never on the bleeding edge. Actually, no, that's not true. <laughs> I think you. I think you invent the bleeding edge a lot of the time. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was gonna be, because I, I'm I'm like a a very late adopter to a lot of tech. Um, in the sense that I like want to hear other how other people like things until I get to it. So I always think that I'm like very late adopter. Like I refuse to get on. Yeah, I basically like to wait at least a year after something comes out to see like how the community grows and if there's going to be good support for it. And stuff. I'm um, so on board with that approach. Like, I feel like it. <laughs> I feel like it removes so much stress from my life because yeah, so many cool ideas just don't have the firepower to like keep going. Yeah, um, and so and, instead of getting really excited and then sad that it didn't live, I'm yeah. like. Okay. And then I, like when I get invested, I get really emotionally invested in things. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Like it's such a it's such a heartbreak when like your favorite tools goes out of fashion and you're like, "No." Yeah. No, I'm like, I can't. I can't take that much heartbreak on a regular basis. So, yeah. So that's why I'm like, "No, I'm a late adopter to things." But then I if I think about like the kind of like work that I like doing, like the kind of like visualizations that I like creating, I guess I'm like, "Oh, I, I guess I guess I do do things like, did I tell you one time I found a Chromebook? <laughs> yeah. So. All, all like all the adventures, right? Um, yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, okay. At, at this point, I think we're, we're, we're kind of over time. Um, Very much so. We <laughs> should probably, <laughs> like every time we do this. probably let you go and get something to eat um, since I've been starving you. And <laughs> from here, I think uh, what we can do next is, so there, there are a few ways that we could do this. I can try to go hunt down somebody who works on Nuxt and try to get them to come on the show and teach me how all this works. Um, oh, that's awesome. You and I could do a follow-up and like continue just working our way through, which I'm actually fully on board with. Um, yeah. Or some combination of the two. Like I could go learn how to do Nux, and then I could try to teach you uh, after they they show me how to do it, which would be really I think that'd funny. Be awesome. Because then it, then yeah. we we decide if the like, show is called Learn with Jason or like Retain Information with Jason, which I'm not sure is true. <laughs> you have to retain enough information to teach me. This is great. We're, we've started a second series. Um, <laughs> <laughs> where the first series was holy buckets and the second series i don't know i don't know what to call it holy nux dits no not that wait what i said holy nux dits and i retain decided jason <laughs> retain jason and lock him down i love it <laughs> uh okay all right um okay so we'll figure it out surely where should people go to find you on oh, the internet yeah. Um, so I'm most active on my Twitter, um, and my handle is at SXYWU. Um, as you can see, there is the old version of my website with the same handle.com. Um, and uh, I was hoping to get 
the um, overhaul, rebrand, whatever to call it, um, done in the first quarter of this year, but that may not happen. <laughs> um, so it will probably look like this for a little bit longer. Um, and but then, there's so much cool stuff on there. Like, go go play <laughs> yeah. on Shirley's site. There are so many cool things in here. Thank you so much. Um, I actually wanted to, I'm so corny. I wanted to um, create a data visualization of my data visualizations and have that be the loading screen for my portfolio website. Oh so that's God. why I wanted um, Parcel.js because it's the only thing I've found where I could easily use Vue D3, or sorry, Vue 3JS slash like a GLSL. Um, like they have they have uh, shader support mm -hmm. and um and of course like d3 and other things um and so without me having to do any extra work so that's why i wanted to use parcel oh interesting yeah i want i mean we could also um dig into like whether or not you can swap out to to parcel with with nuxt um yeah let's see yeah oh, you can you can you can ask that person that you find to learn from. yes chat if you know who works on <laughs> nuxt and you and you would like to see them on this show uh, please tweet at me and tell me who I should talk to because I'm 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 going to ask Sarah too because I think Sarah knows a lot about Nuxt. Uh, Sarah Jai. Oh, that makes sense. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to see if she. I don't. I don't. I don't think she has time to come on the show, but she might have someone that she recommends she to is, teach us. She's on a boat in Hawaii. <laughs> I know she does not care about us right now. She's like, oh, you're doing Nuxt. That's cute. Have fun. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> She's just playing. Um, I'm on a boat on repeat. <laughs> um, okay. Um. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Uh, we'll figure out dates. Um. I. My big deadline is like I have two big deadlines next week, but hopefully after that things will lighten up. Cool. Um, and eventually, I should also take on some client work for money. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That also. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Minor, minor. It, you, you heard it here first. Shirley's looking for work. Uh, 100% hire Shirley to help you, you with your stuff. She's incredible. Uh, go look at her website. And with that, Shirley, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, thank you, Jason. I look forward to our next adventure together. Chat, yes. stay tuned. We're going to raid. And we will see y'all next time. <laughs>